All right, so my friends, what uh, what did we see off of that homework? Questions about it? And this was that silly data, right? We talked about. Any questions on one twenty-seven ish? Good. Pretty easy. We're set. All right. Well, it means I'll lecture there. All right, you ready? So my plan is this. My plan is this. Good. And then Tuesday, I will actually start the next chapter. Don't worry, I don't think it's going to destroy you. And then Wednesday, on our shorter, we have the written portion of the test as well. Okay, so both of these sections can use the note cards. Obviously, please have that TI 83 or 84 graphing calculator. Or some of you have the Casio's, you're going to make those work just fine. So, and I, yes, I have eight of them that you can borrow. I could probably go down and steal them from the other classroom again as well. But that's what I kind of have planned uh, for the next couple days, if that's okay. But it is Friday. Okay. So, I am on page 27. Hey, buddy. I'm on page 27 of the, the notes. All right, statistical analysis 112, summarizing and comparing distributions. So I'm going to read a little bit, then I can talk to Sage. Ultimately, the entire point of statistics is displaying data is to summarize and draw conclusions. Statistics are not usually calculated for their own sake. They're calculated for the, as statistical evidence for a larger argument. Um, so measures of, cent measures of center, okay? So the measures of center are your mean and your median, for the most part, as far as this goes. Now, the mean is the one that's influenced by outliers. The median is not. But let's talk about one thing that, um, that we need to make sure. The median, there are multiple medians. Okay? And that's... You have to remember, we have the Q1, the Q2, which is the normal median, and Q3. We normally just label that as median. Okay? Any of these which deal with our IQR do not get affected by outliers. Okay? They don't get pulled to the right or to the left because you're just talking about middles of data, middles of data. And if you had hundreds or thousands of pieces of data, if there were outliers that did exist, the IQR and the median because the IQR is the median, and then it's the median of the median, both top and bottom, if that even makes sense if I said that right. Measures of spread um, deal with your IQR. There is consistency. There is predictability with it. The shape provides you a loose description of what the data will display. Outliers. So we had that outlier thing that we talked about with our box and whisker. So if you choose the box and whisker that looks like this, this will show outliers. Okay? If you choose the original box and whisker, which looks like this, this won't show the outliers. Okay? So there's two different things, and I'll, I'll just pull it up on the calculator just to show you the location of those. Um, 
if you go into second stat plot, you have two different locations. So this one is just our traditional box of whiskers. We cannot see the outliers there. But this one would show if an outlier existed as dots that are outside. Okay? So one thing you have to make sure, your biggest value, regardless of outlier or not, minus your small value, regardless of outlier or not, would get you the range of your data. And there is some argument, and I think it all depends. So if you had a scenario like this, and you had some outliers, there is some argument that if these are all 25%, some people will state that this is 25%, and some statisticians will state that we ignore this. For the sake of our class, let's not ignore. So this would be our largest value, and then we could have a minimum down here, or it's possible we could have outliers out here. So that would be our minimum value if you wanted to find your range. So it's biggest minus the smallest. Okay. Now, outliers do tell you some information about if you're collecting data and you're trying to make predictions. If you have a whole bunch of outliers that are starting to take place, you might not have something that is valid to make any conclusions off of based off of it. Okay. Number of times you flip a coin getting heads or tails, does that have any impact on rolling a dice? No, if you flip a heads and you roll the dice, the dice isn't like, oh, a heads came up, therefore, you know, I should come up with a certain number. So there are certain things that you might be collecting data off of that you want, you want to say, hey, this is where our information looks like, but if you have a whole bunch of outliers, especially if you have 100,000 pieces of data and 30,000 things are an outlier, it might not be you know what you want to conclude. <clears throat> um, they have those balls that are there from 67 to 82. Right, I think they're balls. Let's see, what does it say? Consider the data temperature and degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, that's kind of a bad looking dot plot because one, you're trying to use some sort of picture, it looks like. Um, a good summary of this data might say the temperature have a medium of approximately 72, so that's the middle of our data. We would have a range of 14 because we'd go 81 minus 67, which is 14. It appears to be skew right because the data is outside. So if we were looking at our thing, this is skew right because it's being pulled out that way. Okay. Um, is the, there statistical evidence that is displayed that the next temperature will be less than 90 degrees? I don't know. I mean, if you're picking arbitrary days, if you had a uh, random number generator and you had all of the days of the year labeled 1 to 365 and you did a random number generator and that's how you were getting your temperatures, that's probably a really bad way to say, oh yeah, this is going to predict we're going to have another day under 90 degrees because a random number generator might pick something that's in the July, August, even September range. And we've all been here long enough to know that we get in a lot of the thing. Is there statistical evidence um, that we would have anything lower than 70? So the long and short of it, they are saying that yes, we should say that our next days might fall below 90 because of what our data is collected. But if you look at the total amount of data we have, it's not really enough to make a huge prediction. We've all seen, or I would think you have seen, weather reports. And they're not always right. Dave Aguilera from News 4 used to live down the street from me. And I used to give him the hardest time going, dude, you get the best job in the world. And he goes, oh, I know I do. And it's like, yeah, but you're always wrong. What a great job to have. You go, well, Chris, you realize I'm looking at these models. I'm like, oh, yeah. I get it, Dave, but you're still wrong. So, so that's why, you know, all of us here in Colorado, and maybe not in your cars, but in your parents' cars, there's a snow shovel year-round probably in the back. And then about uh, 
14 layers of clothing also in the back. And then if there's room for groceries, maybe you put some groceries. Because you just don't know what's going to happen with our data. Um, so there's also the different distributions where we have a um, items where you have Monday and Wednesday. So if you had a stem plot for one piece of information, you would just have uh, 44, 45, 46, 51. Let's say there's 12. So this would be our stem plot this way. But I can also bring out data this way. If I was using, and they're comparing like, a Monday and a Wednesday section. I could have data go out this way as well. Uh, 41, 41, 41, 41, 42, 53. All right, so how this would be read as I'd go, this is 12 this way, but it's 13 this way. This is 21, 23, 26, or 26 and 28, depending upon which way you go. 44, 45, 46, 41, 41, 41, 41, 41, 42, 51, and then 53. So that'd be like if you were comparing two different things, and let's say they're doing assume back-to-back -back STEM plots or scenarios for two different college courses, one that meets Monday, one that meets Wednesday. Um, I don't know what they're trying to say. I don't know what those what their scores are. Uh, let's see, the Wednesday section has a higher median because it, the middle of the data falls at a higher number. Um, and then here's a question. If I had, uh, let's see. So does everyone feel comfortable that our median is probably going to live in here? And how would we find our median? Well, we have to count up our data. So you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there's 15 pieces of data that are being represented on this chart. I don't know on the stem and leaf what it's going with. But the middle of 15 would be the eighth piece of data. So you can count from either way. So I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Or I could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So my median on this data would indeed be 32. Okay. Could I find the average? Absolutely. You'd have to go 11 plus 12 plus 22 plus 23 plus 24 plus all the data. Divide by 15 units. Or obviously plug into your calculator and let that find it. Um, Doorbell. Pizza's here. Uh, let's see. I think I covered about everything that I could possibly want about this unit. So, one, all of the stuff we've done so far is just to look at data to see a trend. You can't guarantee those trends always happen. Okay, so just please be aware that a trend is something that's fine, but it's also, you know, what are you really comparing? If you walk into, you know, a pizza restaurant and survey how many people like pizza, and you collected all that data, and you're like, oh, everyone must like pizza. Well, you're in an environment that's not useful or conducive to that information. So I want to give you guys time to work, converse with, but I was looking at page 129. To, oh, geez, the back of that page. to 131. I want to give you time to do that. Remember, so on Monday, we'll have the multiple choice portion of the test. Please, my friend, you can write anything down on as many note cards as you want for this. If you need to know, know, more note cards, I have some here. I can go grab some from next door. But take a look at those pages. What did I do? 
Muy good. 